Radioactivity was discovered in 1896 by Becquerel. It was the discovery that certain kinds of minerals that you could mine from the earth were emitting some kind of radiation. Um, it turned out in the end that these were a variety of different radiations depending on the substance. But uh, this device is a, is a Geiger counter which allows us to detect at least some of those kinds of radiation. Um, the Geiger counter um, consists of a tube. Down the center of the tube is a wire. And that wire, by means of this box, can be made very positive. At least you can think of it as being a very positively charged object. Now, the thing is made of metal, fairly thick so that it's durable. And you can cart it around. But at least one end is a very thin uh, piece of metal so that uh, if there were particles, charged particles, these emanations, this radioactive uh, emanation could uh, come through the, the little piece of metal, it being thin enough, they get inside the tube. Now inside the tube, if this is a charged particle, it encounters a gas that's on the inside, chosen for its uh, particular properties, and uh, this charged particle will then dislodge some electrons as it passes through the gas. The electrons are negatively charged. The wire down the center is positively charged. So as soon as the electrons are freed from the molecules of the gas, they're attracted to that wire, and they begin to rush pell-mell towards the wire. And as they pass through the, the gas on their way, they dislodge uh, additional electrons which join them. There's a kind of cascade effect to the wire at the center. As soon as they all arrive there, this device then senses the arrival of those electrons on the wire at the center and is uh, fixed so that it creates a, a sound to indicate that this has happened. So if we turn up the sound, we hear the ticking of this Geiger counter. Now I don't have the Geiger counter by any particular substance, it's just sitting here in the air. And uh, we learn from it that we live in a, we live in a sea of radiation. Uh, particles flying around, invisible to us, some of them capable of growing right through us um, without uh, stopping. Some of those particles that are flying around um, are called muons, and they're produced in the uh, atmosphere by cosmic rays. Cosmic rays come into the atmosphere. Cosmic rays are protons very often that are accelerated out in the galaxy somewhere and come into the atmosphere. When they collide with nitrogen uh, nuclei in the, in the atmosphere, they create out of this collision a stream of particles, debris, and among those uh, particles are muons. They're very penetrating. They go right through people and uh, deep down into the earth. And so with the Geiger counter just sitting here and uh, not particularly near anything, it does count um, a few counts from this surrounding radiation. But now with that in mind and that background kind of, uh, kind of defined, we can start to test various kinds of substances to see if they are radioactive. Um, it's an ordinary piece of rock, an ordinary, very uninteresting piece of rock, nothing particularly happening there. Here's a sample. It says that it's a trinitite, fused earth, from the crater of the first nuclear bomb blast at Trinity, New Mexico, 16 July 1945. When that first uh, test bomb went off, it turned the, uh, the sand of the desert into, into glass. Looks like peanut brittle. And it was right there at the heart of an atomic explosion. So we might expect, but are disappointed. Not very much excitement going on there. Perhaps a little, but not much. Well. Here's some, uh, some rock, again, uh, mined, a sample. And uh, now we see that there is a certain amount of activity in that uh, piece of rock. When you get close to it, the Geiger counter begins to count the emanations, whatever, whatever it is that's coming out of that piece of rock. Well, here's one says pitch blend. The ore, the ore which uh, Marie Curie uh, used to extract radium. So if we test that, definitely something going on there. Now, whatever it is that these minerals are spitting out, um, 
We can shield ourselves from them to a certain degree. There's a rather thick piece of lead, and uh, if we slip the lead in between the source and the Geiger counter, it kind of slows down. If we take it out, obviously it's now making its way to the Geiger counter. So these are examples of radioactive substances. We can shield ourselves to some degree from them with the use of something like lead, but there's also a sea of radiation in the atmosphere around us which we just uh, learn to live with.